Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice. While learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on this journey and share in the farmers' experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are in Baringo County. And we are searching for gold. But we are not going to be digging under the ground. Nope, we are looking up towards the sky. Because this is liquid gold. From the honeybees of Baringo. So join us as we find out more on Shamba Shape Up. Today we are visiting beekeeper and pastoralist Simon. Simon is married to Grace. They not only have seven children of their own, they also look after six children from Simon's brother's family. So, it's double important Simon is a successful pastoralist. Their farm covers 30 acres. And Simon doesn't only keep bees for honey. He keeps livestock too. Simon. Hey. Hi. Hello. Fine. How's it going? How are you? Fine, fine, fine. Welcome to our Kapkuikui honey shop. Good, good. Thank you, thank you so much. We are selling honey. Okay. Yes. We have uh, comb honey. Mm -hmm. We have processed honey. We are buying honey from our farmers. Yes. So we do what we call semi-processing. We don't have any machine. We are oh. young farmers. This wow. is very good. But I'm sure there must be something else in the shamba, isn't there? Yeah, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are beehives. Ah. ah, where are they? Let's go see them. All right. Is it this way? <laughs> I, when I first had that shamba shamba, Coming to my farm, I was very, very, very joyful. I was very happy, and I get ready psychologically, preparing myself to receive you. So let's pitch the tent and get ready for work. Arid and semi-arid lands such as these in Baringo make up 80% of Kenya's landmass and are home to a third of Kenya's population. But livelihoods are under threat from climate change and haphazard management. We've come to find out about a program that's helping to restore the environment and bring back profits into farming. It's called PRM, Participatory Rangeland Management. It works by encouraging the local community to take a more active role in land management, especially the common land. A key first step is to map the land to identify its resources. We've come when it's dry, but after the rains, it can get very green. Simon is an early adopter of PRM, so we've come to find out what he thinks Joining us is Ken Otieno, Executive Director, Resource Conflict Institute, Reconcile. He's been working with pastoralists to help implement PRM. So Simon, why is mapping important? Mapping of resources is very important because you will know which resource needs what. For example, you can identify that, you can map this area, is a place where livestock are drinking water. It is good for a dam. You can strike a dam there. Mapping is very, very important in community because different activities need different resources. Aha, yes. Ken, is that true? Mapping is critical because whenever you want to do anything, you must know, you know the kind of tools you require. So in Rangelands, you, you need the spatial understanding of the space. And when you do that, it also helps you to see which is the best mechanism and framework of intervention. But also mapping is critical because within the available uh, legal frameworks, mapping has been emphasized, especially for uh, communally shared resources. Much of the land used by pastoralists in these areas are common lands with shared resources. So involving everyone in the community in planning helps avoid conflict. We need to have one mindset. Let's graze our livestock near our homesteads when it rains. But during drought, we can move further out. 
Wow, wow, this looks amazing, doesn't it, Ken? Yeah, it's beautiful. Ah, Simon. Yes. You've done a very good job. Simon works well with the community in the common lands. However, he also has some of his own land where he puts into practice some of the lessons he has learned from PRM. Simon has just finished harvesting. But two weeks ago, the field looked like this. Quite beautiful. But how has the pasture benefited pastoralists? The benefit of establishing pastures is for three reasons. One, we establish pastures to prevent soil erosion in other areas. Two, we establish pastures for A, to feed on our animals during the dry season as a community. Three, we establish pastures for seed production. All farmers will, will bring their seeds for sale at one place as a group and as a cooperative. Wow. I think what Simon summarizes is, is simple. The traditional uh, pastoral resource management. So the benefit of PRM has just put that into you know, a more modernized perspective where you are able to identify your resources, document them, plan for them, identify key strategic resources such as water points, uh, mobility patterns. And uh, it also informs how communities then are able to plan their land use properly. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you are a farmer, especially in other areas, fattening of animals, you keep the animals for a short time and then you sell all of them. And then after the beginning of the rain, you start buying another one. You give for some time and then you sell. You get money. Wow, and what do we have here? Let's have a look, let's have a look. Here we are seeing typical rangelands, you know, shrubs and trees and stones and everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Simon, yeah. this is how this land used to be. Uh, before I learned something on PRM, my land was like this. PRM is a good initiative. It's a good sample for uh, farmers and agro pastoralists, pastoralists to you know learn from it and realize that it is something that presents them with the great opportunities. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much, Ken. You're doing a great job. Right. Now, you. one more last thing. Just you and I, I want you to take me to see your bees. You said you have so many bees and beehives. We shall <laughs> proceed to the bees. Thank you very much, Ken. It's not only the men who have a stake in managing rangeland resources. PRM encourages the women to be involved too. And honey production is key. Irene Alo Mukalo from Reconcile has played an important role in helping the women take part in community management, while at the same time building livelihoods. She's taking us to meet the Captain Bay's women's group. They not only make goods and necklaces for sale, they now run their own honey business. I wanted to hear from them what has been their experiences. Hi, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You see, I know how to say hello. Nice, nice. So, what are you doing? Good work. Is there anything else you do? Asale. Tuna vrayanga asale. I area itu ne dry kwele. Atuna gitingi na tuna tuna zatoa kwa area itu kama shi asale, kama shi mbusi. Atuna gitingi na tuna toa. Na chuo asale aku na pesa mingi. Na shukuru reconcile sababu alitupea msinga sita sasa tunaelekea kufuna anatusaidia tukiuza tuna watoto wetu wa shule tunatubea maneno ya chakula ya mbani ilibaki na sasa kivake tunaweka kwa account kwa mwaga moja tunachukua ngazi dividend that is very nice and i've heard you talk about reconcile tunashukuru reconcile na PRM sababu anatusaidia kama sisi wa mama wa Aha. So it seems you've really empowered this lady. So tell us, where did it start? PRM is a project that looks at uh, rangelands management. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the goals of PRM was to enhance women involvement and engagement in decision making, governance and management of uh, the rangeland resources. Mm -hmm. Why is it so important that women are involved? Women have never been put on decision making platforms. Mm -hmm. And that is critical because we, we always say that if I'm not sitting on the table, 
I'll not really have the, you know, the opportunity to tell my story. But if I'm sitting on the table, then I'll tell my story and people will hear my story. Mm. And so then it became very important that women are indeed involved in the committees. Mm -hmm. Because the committees then make decisions around here. The committees decide on how to distribute resources. Because when we get money, for instance, funding at the conservancy, the decision is made by the committee. How do we distribute this money? So if we don't have women representation in these committees, then they're always left out. Mm. Okay. But why are women's voices so important in the committees? What's wrong with just having the men in charge? The gender the dynamics and the gender perspectives are different. Mm -hmm. Women will Mama see no, resources from a different angle. Mm -hmm. When they look at probably a goat, they think of milk, they think of the babies and how the babies will get milk. Mm -hmm. And in the pastoral setup, it is the role of women particularly to take care of the young animals. Yes. So if that is the case then, it is important for them to understand the natural resources that are also contributing to make these animals healthy. Mm. The other thing is that women are also using these uh, resources for purposes of, you know, ensuring that their families are getting their daily needs. So for them, a forest has enough provisions. So I'll get my fruits there, I'll get firewood, mm -hmm. so all these things. So the role of women in the management of these resources is very critical. Sisi wa mama sasa tumeingia chenda kama kamiti sasa tuko kama chenda sababu samani any mkutano yote ile anafanyika kwa crown hapa chini au kwa chenda sasa saa hii pia rem filalifika sisi wa mama tukakumbukwa tuingie chenda. So now as women you are allowed to make decisions, you are allowed to to sit at the table with the men. Is that what you're trying to say? Mm. And is it a good thing? Tuko na sauti hata saa hii kwa tukienda sasa kitu kama nini tunasema hata sisi eh lazima tuko mbele sababu sasa kama tumekumbukwa hata sisi tuko na sauti. Tunafurahia. How did the men take it? You know since PRM came in as women we had something to give to our men. We can even assist them to pay school fees mm -hmm. because we have some money. If you put 20 shillings, you can put in 30 shillings yes. and make it 50. Yeah. So it's a good thing. It is a very good thing. They are happy now because uh. before they were not happy. Are you experiencing any problems? And in the future, would you like to expand? Tunataka mingi zababu. Tugibewa mingi, tunabata azali mingi. Kitu ila tugona shida sahi ni kitu ya kutuwa nae. You don't have protective gear yeah. to help you in harvesting the honey. Yeah. All right. And do you have the machine to help you in harvesting and maintenance? Atuna. Oh, so as Shamba Shepap, you never know. Maybe we may have a solution for that. Well, well, well. There you are, Tony. Yes, Carol. So, how is it so far? Like we always say, Caro, if farmers come together as a group, they can get the most out of their land. Mm -hmm. How about you? Ah, you see, when the women are empowered, then the family unit is made stronger. And when the family unit is stronger, the nation is happy. But still to come after the break... We want to see how we can help the women beekeepers of Kapirong expand their business further. And adapting to climate change, new measures for looking after livestock. Welcome back to Shamba Shepa. We are in Baringo and you are visiting Simon. We have seen how community management can benefit dry land areas. But we also want to find out how finance can help grow your business. And keeping goats in a changing climate. Tony, why are we wasting time? Let's go to work. Let's go to work. Baringo County is one of Kenya's largest producers of goat meat with around half of the population involved in goat production. Goats are well adapted to this dry land environment and do well even in periods of drought when other livestock such as cows and sheep are suffering. But in recent years, climate change has caused the droughts to get worse, meaning there is less forage for the goats to feed on. So I've come to meet our expert Solomon Kerieng from Baringo County office to find out what can be done to support the goats of Baringo County. So, so Solomon, what are the advantages of keeping goats while the climate changes? The goats can, can withstand even a harsh drought. Cattle and sheep will die or they can move out, but goats, they don't move, they don't migrate. 
if they sell one, they get uh, a, a one pack of uh, of maize, one pack of maize, which is 90 kilos, is equivalent to one goat. So it is a livelihood here. Mm. And also even the school fees, even clothing, they rely, they entirely rely on goats. And they are easy to manage. Easy to manage, and also it's accessible to all members of the community. Ladies and men can participate in keeping goats, mm -hmm. and they can proudly own. But in the case of large stock like cattle, it is only owned by the men. Mm -hmm. So it is very easy. It is very gender friendly. The goats are a wonderful resource for the whole community. But what can farmers do then to look after them while the climate changes? So Simon, yes, sir. how do you feed your goats with this climate change? How have you adapted to it? What uh, we have decided as farmers is to reduce the number of goats. Uh -huh, because of climate change? Because of climate change. There is no trees for process. The grazing land decreases. Solomon, is that a wise decision for farmers to reduce the stock? Farmers believe in having as many animals as possible, but the problem is that the quality of those animals are really very poor because of inbreeding and because they lack uh, enough feed, they have become very small. Mm -hmm. So our advice to farmers is to improve the breeds because right now they have the small East Africa goats ranging from 10 kilos to 15 kilos. But if they can improve, they, it can go up to even 50 kilos. 50 kilos? Yes. Yeah. From one goat? From one goat. It can sell that one between 8,000 to 12,000. But um, the smallest Africa goat, it sells from 1,500 to at least 3,000. Mm -hmm. So a good breed can fetch higher, more amount of money. So one good goat of good breed is equivalent to 10? Yes, to 10. To 10 no more breeds. Yes. And those 10 can eat a lot, can't yes. they? Yes. Whilst th that one goat will feed very little because yeah, you can yeah. be able to manage it yeah, and maintain it, it yes. well. Yes. Mm. Good. Which is the best breed that you recommend that farmers have? Yeah, the best breed in this region is the gala goats. Gala goats. Yes. Where do the farmers get that kind of breed from? They can go to northeastern part of Kenya, like Isholo, whereby gala goats are predominant there. So they can purchase from farmers from there, and then uh -huh. they bring it this way. And also we have got Calro Research Institute within Maricat, within Paringo uh, South. Do you have gala goats? Because of the advice of all my expert, I am going to find one, look for one. Now, we can't speak about feed without water. Where do your goats get the water from? Because they are trekking far away to the community grazing field, on their way, they pass through the canal to stay drink water there and yeah. cook. What are the disadvantages of your goats going to the community water to drink? They meet with many goats from other villages. Others, they are suffering from diseases like CCPP. And then the presence of wildlife are there again. And they are the carriers of ticks. And they will spread tick-borne diseases to our livestock. Mm -hmm. That is a big challenge. Uh -huh. And again, worms. They will contract worms there. So our farmers, I would advise them, vaccination is the best answer. Another point is to do regular deworming throughout the year. For more information on vaccination and deworming for goats, call iShamba and find out where you can get supplies near you. So they shouldn't overstock yeah. and they should get good breeds. Breed, yes. Yes. So remember to manage your goats as the climate changes. One, keep less goats. Two, get good breeds that are hardy and gives you more meat and money. And three, vaccinate and warm your goats. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. In the coming week, we expect very little to no rains across Kenya except in the coastal and western regions. Most parts of the country will be dry with less than 5 mm of rains. This includes eastern, northeastern, the Rift Valley and central regions. Coastal counties comprising of Kilifi, Kwale, Mombasa and Tana River, including some parts of Garissa, will get little to moderate amount of rainfall of up to 50 mm. Lamu is the only county in this region that is expected to see moderate to very high rainfall ranging from 25 to 105 mm. Western and Nyanza region counties spanning across Bungoma, Busia, Kakamega, Vihiga, Siaya, Kisumu, 
Homa Bay and Migori expect rains of up to 50 mm with Kisi and Yamira expecting little to moderate amount of rainfall ranging from 15 to 50 mm. If you are in the central Rift Valley and western regions, the maize crop is almost at knee high. This is the best time to top dress with nitrogenous fertilizer such as CAN and urea. Use one teaspoon of fertilizer per plant. Spread the fertilizer around the base of the plant 15 cm from the stem. Fall armyworms have been detected in some counties in the Rift Valley and Western regions. The damage is more severe at the young growing phase of plants. Start control with recommended insecticides as soon as the pest is spotted and holes appear on the crop. Although there will be little rain over this period, some days are likely to rain. Make sure you harvest water on these days for use later when it is dry. During the rains, there will be an increase in worms that attack livestock. Carry out the recommended deworming schedule, that is, once a month for calves and every three months for cows. For more tips and farming information, contact iShamba on 0711-082-606. I am Brenda, see you next week on the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. It's not only goats that are a key part of this region's economy, it's honeybees too. Most of Kenya's 4,000 tons of honey produced every year comes from arid and semi-arid lands. The Kaptumbase Women's Group decided they wanted to be part of this success story, but there are always challenges. And getting finance to help their business grow is one of the biggest. So, I decided to go and meet them. I've invited a very special guest who I think will have the answers that they need. Albert Bundi is from the Kenya Women's Microfinance Bank, KWFT. He's going to explain how financial institutions can help turn small businesses with small amounts of money into big fortunes. But first, let's find out what the group currently does with their money. Our money, we keep it under our beds. Eh? You keep under the bed? Yeah. I know where all of you live, so I'll come for that money. <laughs> yes, we understand, but now, Lynette, I'm here telling you that you can open an account, you can save your money in the bank, it will be safe, and at any given time you want your money, you can get it. You don't need to come all the way to Marigat. Just from the comfort of your bedroom, with using the mobile banking, you can be able to access your money, you withdraw your money, you deposit your money, and then you will be having money everywhere you walk around with as much as you have your phone. But are there other advantages to keeping money in the bank, apart from security? So if you save the money in the bank, again, there is some interest that you get on your savings. So if you had 100 shillings, you have saved for two months, three months. When you go back, you get it is around 130 shillings. Mm -hmm. And also just to add on what Albert has said, when you put your money under the bed, anything can happen to it. Yes. How many days? Are we going to save? How many shillings? As low as 50 shillings. You want to buy a beehive. Yes. A beehive is 5,000 shillings. Yes. So how long would I save 5,000? So you take 5,000 divided by 50 shillings. That's 100 days. 100 days. So if you save 50 shillings for 100 days, you have your 5,000. You want to withdraw your 5,000 and you want to get your beehive. Mm -hmm. So that's how we need to save money. Yes. Apart from that, there is some other things that you can get from the bank. You might also think that now the savings is not enough. For me, I want to get a beehive today. Because we have opened an account with you, I can see the way you have been using your account. Then I can say, yes, Lynette, I can give you 5,000. And then every month, you will be returning 500 shillings. So you get a beehive today, and you see one kilo of honey, you sell around 700 shillings. Yeah. So those are only around eight liters in a month, you are able to pay your beehive. Mm -hmm. So, there are two ways to get a beehive or other equipment like protective clothing. You can save and buy when you have enough money. Or, you can get a loan, buy straight away and pay back the loan out of your profits from selling the honey. So, for today, I want to take you through a practical session to learn how to do bee farming in a form of a business. We normally say kwa Kiswahili, kilimo, biashara. Mm -hmm. That what we are doing, we are doing is as a business and we need to generate enough money to pay expenses. Then we get profit okay. from the activities that we are doing. 
Opening a bank account is not only a safe place to save money and earn interest or a place to get loans, some banks also offer farming advice. They can show how the equipment works, explain how much extra money you can earn using them and suggest ways to pay for the items. So, our farmers can upgrade their equipment while at the same time making extra money. Albert has bought some interesting items. Protective clothing to avoid stings, improved beehives to increase honey production, and a centrifuge for extracting honey easily. But will farmers really be able to afford these items? These machines are very much affordable. Like this one, our whole set is 12,000. So 12,000 every month is 1,000. And they said there are 20 members. Mm -hmm. So if there are 20 members, divided by 20, every month each member will be paid 50 bob. Isn't that good? It is. Oh, isn't that affordable? Yes. Mm. yes. Very affordable. Very much affordable. Mm -hmm. Yes. Once you apply for the loans, I will deliver the beehives here. Even I will do the installations at your appearing. Then we'll also be supporting you on the trainings. And then we'll get more honey, more money, more... Now that is it. Are we happy? Ah, bye bye. Oh, bye bye. Yes, yes. Nice. Uh, Albert? Yes, Caro. Thank you so much. Now we are so happy we'll have uh, Robbie Siek. Mm. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Hello, ah. Albert. Yes. Honey. Hello, ladies. Yes. Yes. How are you? Yes. Caro? Yes. We found the liquid gold. You actually you? found it. We found it before. But yes. There you are. Good, good. This is very nice. <laughs> yes. Well very done. Nice. Thank you, ladies. Yes. And we'll see you next time on Shamba Shepa. Uh, having Shamba Sheba within my home and the farm, I have enjoyed it. I would like to come back again and see what difference we have made.